delays that I have. <laughs> So I hope you all had a great weekend. It was relaxing and fun and um, you had a very pleasant time. Um, sorry, I'm trying to see as many ways as I can have as many devices as possible to help keep my communication up with everyone. But um, this morning, because we are the 2-Bit Circus Foundation organization and we're all into a little bit of zany fun, we're going to do a little bit of carnival activities. I have worked for the foundation for about a year and it is it has been an honor and a pleasure to talk to so many people as well as have the ability to be able to go out into our communities, especially out in LA before this shutdown, and be able to explore new ideas with different children in different ways where they might have the ability to learn something new and learn something different. Um, but I digress, enough is enough. <laughs> so let's get started today on some basic balloon twisting. Now, where I originally found out these skills was for a party company that I worked for. I played different characters that you might know, superheroes that you might know, but one of the fun activities that we always offered was some basic balloon twisting. So what you're going to need is a balloon pump. I like this one. I got it off of Amazon. It's from Qualitex, if you can see right there. Amazing. And then Qualitex also makes these great balloon twisting balloons for people. They're super sturdy as well as they have the ability to make sure that your balloons don't break too often, which is something that I was terrified of when I first started balloon twisting. But you do have to be careful, as always, with heat. Um, latex... Um, <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, Starks on it said, I love the beauty YouTuber hand behind the product move. Um, thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll do more hand guiding. I'll be the Vanna White of all the products I show today. Um, but as I was saying about the balloons, they are very sensitive to heat because they are made out of latex. So if you find that you want a balloon twist on a hot day or these have been sitting out in the sun, you might find that your balloons twi uh, pop more often than not, which is very sad, but it is what happens. Um, in addition to that, what I like about these balloons is that they're very sturdy. So my biggest fear when I started balloon twisting was um, the potential of having it break or pop on me, which I really hated. Oh, and of course, work is reminding me to tell you all that, of course, this is all available today and we want to send Big, big thanks to our big partners, Vans, for their support in making these streams possible to come to you Monday through Fridays, every day from 10 to 11. You'll see myself as well as some of my colleagues um, do different activities every day. So if you like something that I do today that you would like to see a little more, please let us know. We're available on Instagram at jubitcircus.org, as well as Facebook. And we have our website, which is www.jubitcircus.org. Dot org, and you can contact through uh, contact us through those different avenues to tell us what you like, what you'd like to see more of, um, and find out any more information about us that you may like. Ooh, and thank you for following Rainbow Bamboo. It's good to see you. We hope we see more of you. Now back to balloons because I'm getting extremely, extremely distracted. I apologize. So what you're gonna want to do is you want to grab your balloon pump and a balloon. And what we're going to do first today is we're going to show you a variation on a sword. That's right, we don't like to play with sharp objects, but when they're made out of latex, it's not so bad. So, with swords, what you're going to first want to do is be able to inflate your balloon to its full length, as you can see right here. It's a very long balloon, I can't even fit it in my full screen. Oh, there we go. Now, to tie off balloons, what I always like to do is pinch a little bit down from where the end is, release it so that you have a lot of extra room to be able to tie the knot. Give yourself a little grace. It's going to be hard the first couple times, but you should be able to have a balloon that's fully tied from end to end and it looks like a big giant snake. 
that's the beginning of our sword. Then you're going to want to take the end that you tied, fold it over a little bit because what we're creating now is the sheath for the sword. So you want to have enough room to put in the other end of the sword into, but you don't want it too big, otherwise it might look a little funky later. So once you have this here like a little fish, you're gonna wanna pinch the small end just like this, my friends, and we're gonna wanna twist. That's right, twisty, twist, twist, twist. Twist it as many times as you'd like until you feel like it's secure, just like so. And so we should have a little end right here and the long sneaky sword on the other side. So, this doesn't look very much like a sword, does it? No, it looks more like a very odd leash for a dog. So, what we're gonna do now is take the long end of the sword and the little um, sheath that you just made, you're going to insert it and pull all the way down. And by doing so, you have now created a basic sword that you can now <laughs> Gently tap against things <laughs> and you will have tons of fun. Now, as you can see, I put a lot of pressure onto the balloons because they can actually handle it. Oh, and we have a surprise visitor this morning. This is my cat Poseidon. I will not let him take over this stream though. Oh my goodness, buddy, you have to move out of the way. Maybe we can talk about a class about cats if you're interested in that. So please let me know in the comments below. Oh, let him take over the stream. Okay, well, I'll let him take over the stream for a little bit. But as a cat, as you know, he likes to do his own things. So he went out. Oh, thank you for the compliment to Mitt Circus. I love his name because I'm a big fan of Greek mythology and I'd like to actually do a fun class with you on it. He's watching me right now. Um, because I loved reading and I loved the elements of fantasy and magic. And so when I was able to be an adult and grab a cat of my own, I named him Poseidon and he lives here on Mount Olympus with his um, cat sisters, Athena and Artemis. Oh, thank you, you guys. He is very beautiful. And um, he does not like water. He's actually quite terrified of water. So his name is a little, a little ironic. But I can tell you this, he definitely feels like the king of the castle. Um, <laughs> as he gave you guys a look. <laughs> so he is aptly named. But I digress again. Let's go back to the sword. So you saw me create a very, very simple swashbuckling sword. But we might want to make this just a little bit more fancy. Oh no! Okay, I will try to move him. So I apologize, my friends, ahead of time if he gets in the way. So, second sword, same idea. We want to be able to inflate the sword to its full extent. Now, be careful when you inflate your balloons because they do have the tendency to pop. And you can always feel it because you can feel the pressure inside of the balloon in here. So if it's hard to squeeze, you've probably put too much air. And if it's too easy to squeeze, and you find that the air is going other places, it's probably too, not a lot of, um, is probably losing a lot of air. I have Starks on it, you don't leave room at the tail. No, you do not leave room at the tail. You do leave room at the tail for other balloons, but not a sword, because if you leave tail room at the end of the balloon on a sword, it'll have this little sticking out part that doesn't make it quite look like a sword. Thank you, Dr. Haynes. I love my four-legged friend too. <laughs> so, Oh, and he might be the next grumpy cat, Gonzalo. I'm not really sure, but he might be. So again, my friends, we're gonna make the same sort of sheath. Fold it in half right here and hold on to the balloon end and twist again. So this should all look familiar to us. We are back at this point with the sheath and the weird end, but this time we're gonna do something very, very fancy. So have you ever seen those swords that have a hilt that's ornate or has really great metal work in it, we're gonna do that with a balloon. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna section off three little bubbles. So at the top, 
you're going to pinch it right there and twist. And you're going to repeat that same iteration, which means the same thing two more times. So one more time. That's a second one. And a third iteration of the same technique to get the third bubble. Now, these bubbles can be any size that you like. Do not worry. It's all about your own personal style. Once you get your three little bubbles, as you can see right here, you're going to take the end of the sword and put it right through the sheath again. And once you straighten it out a little bit, because our swords are a little bendy, you have a fancy swashbuckling sword. Fancy versus, oops, simple. So, depends on what kind of sword style you like, but these are both available to you now. And what's extra nice about them is that you've made a little hand holder for your friends so they can put their hands right here and have at it. It's not as much fun, me playing by myself, but I feel like this could be a great activity. So we've done swords now. Swords are a very, very basic balloon. They're great to start with because they tell you, um, excuse me, they show you how to practice your twisting as well as being comfortable with moving different parts of the balloons around and getting used to the different uh, excuse me, different kinds of pressures that you need to use when twisting. Be confident. That is my number one advice to anyone is be confident in your balloon twisting. The balloon will not hurt you, I promise. <laughs> I was terrified of that as well. But if you, uh, I don't mean to say attack, but if you grasp onto the balloon with confidence and twist it with all your might, you should be just fine. Next, we are going to move on to a dog. Now, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to do the cool thing with the dog at the end, but I might not be able to because it's not my forte. Now, with the dog, we do not want to inflate our balloon the entire way because dogs have what at the end of them? A tail. So, we got to leave room for the tail. And if we inflate the balloon all the way, he's going to have a tail that's just as big as the rest of his body, which is not good. <laughs> make a shark dog. I wish I could make a shark dog. I'm not so talented, but once everything passes in California, I'll see if I can invite my friend Rob, the balloon guy, over, and he creates these amazing awesome balloon structures. He creates these giant balloon hats and these giant balloon outfits. He's a really, really cool guy. <laughs> Any dog will do. Well, thank you. Any dog will do. So today we're going to try to create some form of a poodle, but it might end up looking like a German Shepherd. So we will see. Alrighty. So as you can see, I used two pumps. That way I can have a little bit of a tail at the end, kind of like Pluto. If you can shake it back and forth, you're good to go. And then this is the head. So again, if you don't feel like you have enough room here, you're gonna let out a little air so that you can tie the end of the balloon yourself. Oh, you're very welcome for the presentation. I'm happy to help any time. Now, we're gonna work from the top of the dog to the end of the dog. Please do not go backwards. It won't work that well. At least I haven't tried, but I don't suggest it. So first off, you are going to figure out how big you want your dog's head to be. Now, you don't want it to be too long because remember, we don't have that much balloon left. So you do have to keep in mind that the whole entire dog has to fit right here. So I pinch right here, right around the face. That looks like about a decent size for the head of this dog and I twist. Oh, that one actually might be a little too small. So I'm gonna move back a little bit and create a, a head that's about the size of a tiny lemon. Once we do that, we're going to work on the ears. Now, to create separation in the ears, you're going to fold your ears in half right here, which is the rest of the balloon, as you can see. Oops. And that will happen. If your balloon becomes untwisted, that is perfectly fine. Just pinch it again. This looks to be kind of decent for a dog's ear size, but I might make it a little bit tinier because we have to do another twist here because dogs have two ears, not just one. So we have to show the separation between the ears. And ta-da, we have two ears and a head. So right now your dog can see and breathe and wag his tail. <laughs> Next, we're gonna work on the neck. Now you don't want the neck too long either because then we'll start running out of balloon. 
So I, bought, I use about the same size as the head of my dog and I twist for the neck. So we have a neck. Next comes the feet. Same idea as the head, you guys. We're gonna wanna twist it because dogs have how many paws? Four. So we gotta make all four. So then I twist again. And we've got a head, two ears, a neck, and two little paws. Very good. Oh, good. I know, I get a little anxious about balloon, balloon twisting too. I used to feel like the more you would twist it, the more you would feel like it was going to pop any second. And surprisingly, because these are made out of latex, and latex is a very stretchy material, they're pretty good as long as you don't overblow them or you don't leave them out too long in the heat. Right, so now, back to the doggy. We gotta do the rest of his body, right? So you're gonna section off his body. I would say about right here is good. You want it to be a little longer than the rest of his top half so that you can find real separation. And to join the other two legs we just had, we gotta create him two new legs. So, we will have four, paw four paws, excuse me, after all. And we have our little dachshund. He's a little bit of a sausage dog. He's on the longer side. And when you play with your dogs in different ways, in the way of twisting them, making them, you can make them poodles. You can make the body shorter and a little bit more puffy for a big puffy poodle. Or you can make him a little longer like this with a big long tail like this for a German Shepherd. Or I've learned a neat trick. Let's see if it works there is a way for you to create a little bubble at the end of this tail that's far away from the rest of the tail. Now, let me try to explain this the best that I can. On the big half of the balloon, you wanna hold onto it and push down almost. Like you're pushing the air out of the big part of the balloon and into this tiny part up here. Now, before you push and squeeze, you want to extend the short part of your tail to where you're almost pinching a little balloon at the top. So you can see here my hand is down at the base for squeezing, stretching out the tail, and then there's a little bubble at the top. I'm gonna try to push down and get the air to move exactly where I want it to. Now, I have had a success rate of this particular trick. Oh! See what I mean? <laughs> I've been able to do this about five times and I've been balloon twisting for the last year and a half. A year and a half, excuse me. Yes, it was abs it is absolutely able to make a tail at the uh, bubble at the end of the tail. Now let's see if I can do this again. Woo! Let's see. It is very, very difficult. But essentially what you want to do is that you want to squeeze down on the rest of the dog to try to get the air up there. Unfortunately, it seems like I either don't have enough air or not enough great pressure, but the bobble is not coming as easily as it typically, oh. Okay, so here is something that I always have a problem with. All right, do you see how the bubble is not quite at the end of the tail? Yes, that will happen quite a lot. So this is just because you have probably pinched in the wrong area and you haven't pinched enough at the top to, to create that little bubble where the air needs to go. So all you do is you push down and see if you can pinch your fingers again in a different place. Now, this is just gonna take a little bit of practice. As I said again, I've been balloon twisting for almost a year and I'm still having issues. But that is your basic dog, my friends. And he's super fun, he'll last you a long time. And the nice thing about him is that you don't have to walk him clean up after him or feed him. So it's the best kind of pet. <laughs> Alrighty, next in line is a flower. Now this flower, I'm gonna give you multiple options for it. It can either be a corsage, which is a fancy word for a flower um, piece that ties onto your wrist, or it can be buttoned onto your lapel, just like so. Or it'll have a very long stem at the end and you can just hold it like a pretty little flower. Now, no one actually told me how to make this. I just figured it out on my own. So that's the nice thing about balloons as well, is that you have the absolute ability to be able to create your own ideas and your own shapes.
by using these basic twists and ideas that I've already shown you. So we're going to blow this up just like a sword. So it's fully, oh, it's losing a little bit of air. Oh, this one is losing a lot of air. So if you can do this, my friends, it's probably because your balloon is not fully twisted at the end. So I will let that one go and we will inflate another one. I heard a suggestion for blue flowers. So I've picked a new blue balloon. Inflate it all the way, my friends. I believe I gave that pump, pump, ooh, and a little bit of sweet from the end while I twist the bottom. Okay, let's try this again. Oops. Okie dokie. Balloon fully inflated from end to end. Now we're gonna start with this end, which does not have the tie and it's gonna be the center of our little flower. Flower centers usually hold most of the pollen that bees find and other animals like bees, like hummingbirds for example, so that it can help grow new flowers. So when bees jump from flower to flower, they pass along its pollen, which helps it create more flowers at the end of the day, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to do first after we make our little center is we're going to twist these little ears. Now remember the ears that we did for the dog? We're going to do the exact same thing. But instead of twisting extra in the middle to create a separation, we're just going to fold it up like a little U and twist. <laughs> and that will happen a lot, my friends. Do not get discouraged if your balloon starts untwisting on you. That just means that you've got to twist a little more. So your petals should kind of look like that. And I'm going to repeat that about four or five more times. It's up to you how many you'd like. It depends on how many petals you can fit on your flower or what looks good to you. Some days I make three petal flowers. Some days I make four petal flowers. Some days I make five petal flowers. It's all up to you. Now, do keep in mind, and you can kind of hear it with all the squeaking I'm doing, <laughs> is that the balloon gets tighter and tighter the more you twist it. And to answer your question, Green Orcas, do my kitties pop the balloons? Yes, but they do it only once, and once they've learned their lesson, they don't do it anymore because I think they're terrified by it. Um, Artemis got a little too friendly with my flower balloon the other day and she scared herself. So not anymore. <laughs> Wouldn't the flowers get very short if you make so many petals? That is also true. So keep that in mind is that your balloon will get shorter and shorter the more petals that you get. That is right. I believe I can fit in maybe one more petal. I've got about four. So that's what a four petal flower looks like. And what you can do is you can see that some of my petals, they're turned the wrong way. I don't know if I like that, but some people do make their flowers that way. They'll turn them all just like this so that you can create more. And I might do that since I want to create a five petal flower today, but you can also move the flower petals to face outward so they look just like that and it looks very beautiful. I'm a big fan. But let me see if I can create one more flower twist without popping anything. Ooh, about to get scary. All right, we did it. We have a five petal flower that's got a ginormous petal, <laughs> but it's okay. Now, usually I have a little bit more air than this at the end, so I will show you on a different one. But if you're good with your flower, this is it. It's got a lovely bud at the top. You've just got to move things around to make sure it looks like a flower and it doesn't look kind of weird and funky. So move things around just how you like it. There we go. So what you can do is once you blow your flower and you didn't <laughs> inflate it as much as I did, oopsies. What you can do is you can take that end, it should be loose just like so, wrap it around your wrist and tie it. And then you've got a pretty little balloon flower corsage. It's a great add-on if you're ever about to go out somewhere or wanna do something cool and funky. It's a great place to possibly, um, it's a great uh, accessory to bring to possibly our anti-gala. I know I'm referencing things really ahead of time, but 
just keep that in mind, our little Twitch followers. We do have an anti-gala, and last year we had amazing laser-cut bow ties and mechanical ones. <laughs> Poe is back. And why not add onto your mechanical light a bow tie with a flower corsage made out of balloons? Who knows? Alrighty, before we get into face painting, I'm going to show you one more balloon that's going to be a butterfly. Now, there are many, many iterations of a butterfly. There are people who use multiple balloons because they want to create the body and then the wings. And then some people, like today, which I'm going to show you, is we're going to create kind of an artistic version of a butterfly. It will still look like a butterfly, but it won't be a fancy butterfly. These are great balloons to start with. Oh, it's a this is a complex one. Kind of. It can be. So I'm sorry if I lose myself. Can a balloon flower be made with more than one color? Absolutely. You can absolutely use more than one color, but we're just doing basic balloon twisting today, so that's why I'm only using one. But what people do, really professional um, balloon twisters will do, is that they'll twist the flower first in one color, whatever color you like, as well as a small balloon as the center color for your flower. And then they'll use a third color, green usually, for the stem and the leaves. Now, people who do a lot of professional balloon twisting, they don't just have balloons that look like this. They have balloons in many different shapes and sizes, and that's how they can get those perfect hearts or perfect rocket shapes or the little twisties. Those are all very specific types of balloons, and when you inflate them, they have those properties. So if you feel like you get a, bowl, a bag of Olaplex balloons like me, and you're feeling like, hmm, I can't do these really crisp and awesome things. Do not worry. It is not you. You're just not getting the right balloons. But if you're really interested in it, I would suggest exploring more. There are many, many different ways that um, you can look into balloon twisting, whether that be finding your local friend and helping you out, or I found a lot of videos on YouTube as well. And of course, our little beginner video right here. Oh, Starks on it has a comment. Ooh, she learned to do balloon animals for her brother's, little brother's, fifth birthday. Oh, dog, bunny, dachshund, and giraffe, which is all the same one. That is true. If you didn't know, a dog, a bunny, a dachshund, and a giraffe can be the, all the same animal. That's right, because you're just using the same sort of twist. So with a giraffe, all you gotta do is make a longer neck. With a bunny, just make sure that the ears are bigger. And with mice, you wanna make sure everything's teeny, tiny. A mouse should have a long, long piece of tail left that is not inflated. They're very, very cute. And I guess if we have time at the end, I might try a mouse. But right now, we're going to work on this butterfly. So, butterfly. Now, this is tricky with this one. This is actually more complicated, which is why I waited to the end. You do want to leave a little bit of room at the very, very top of the balloon so that you can bring it all the way around and twist it into one giant loop. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So we're gonna inflate our balloon. One, two, three, four. Uh, I would say about six pumps. And that's six pumps going one direction or the other, not double pump. Tie the knot. Ooh, you like butterflies? I'm glad you do. Well, this one will be for you. Okay, so end to end. As you can see, there's a little bit of end on this side and a little bit of end on this side. And why you want that to happen is because you want to create a giant knot right now. So we want to take these two ends and tie them together into a loop. This is a little bit more of a complicated tie because you don't have a lot of surface area to work with. But be brave, my friends, be brave, and keep twisting. Ah! Ah! And eventually, you'll have a full loop. So as you can see, I'm fully tied. Now, this doesn't look anything like a 